Hey, Matt. Hello there. Oh, we're going back. Throwback. Throwback. Throwback to the prequels. What uh? What are we doing? Uh, we are doing stuff. That, the Gamers yep. Two podcast. Good job. There you go. Well done. Week of October. What is today? The twelfth. October twelfth. It's in the corner. It is in the corner. <laughs> we took Good a week to off. We did. Well, you took a week off. I took a week off. Yeah, not we. I, I was obligated to take a week off. I mean, you could have done it alone. I did that. I made that mistake sometime last year. That was an awful decision. Don't ever do that. I thought about that afterwards. Randomly, I was like, oh, man, I should have just like broke into his house and brought a random person. And I say you broke in. I could have just, you would have just called me. I could have told you how to get in. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. But it's like, more exciting if I break in. Fair enough. But then I was like, "Oh, that's just too much work." And <laughs> it would have been a, it would have been entertaining when all of a sudden you're like, "Hey, by the way, can you go in and publish this episode?" And I'm like, <laughs> "What? What are you talking about?" <laughs> it's just me masturbating with VR on. Yeah. So we are doing a thing. Doing a thing. Yeah, it's kind of funny because. Are we already it, getting off topic? We are. Well, no, not really. Oh, it okay. just so happens that, you know, the week that you have prior obligations. The, the, it's that probably, I have a wedding to attend. Yeah. yeah, It's probably like the most news we've had in like... A few weeks. In a long time. Both In both weeks. In it both weeks. So yeah. it's like, all right, we cram all this in. So yeah, we're going to hit. We're going to hit some high points. We're going to hit some true bullet listing yeah, but we'll get through it all. We'll bring you back up to speed in the last two weeks. If you want to hear about Nate's uh, adventure in Texas, you just did. So <laughs> <laughs> there's not much more to say hmm. without having the state of Texas come to try right, to arrest here me. Here we go. If <laughs> if you didn't have to contend with New York State winter, would I move to Texas? I was going to say, would you buy a Mustang? Would I buy a Mustang? Oh, my rental car. Or would you go? Um, if I didn't have to contend with the idea of winter, would I buy the Mustang? I'd have to drive a couple others before I would say yes to the Mustang. Yeah, you're like a Camaro guy, right? I'm a challenger. Ch- I'm a challenger. Want a challenger. I want a Challenger. Uh, the problem with the Challenger was I was gonna I was gonna get one of those. There was, but the one that was in the lot was already being the, that I could see was already being claimed by somebody else, and they were taking it. Mm-hmm. And then there were two guys that were in front of me that were offered the Mustang that I had, and they're like, "Oh no, we'd prefer a Challenger." And the guy's like, "All right, I'll see if I have one." So I think he was going to start scouring all of their parking stuff to find a Challenger. What's the obsession with the Challengers? I don't know. I I like him because I like the just the big the muscly I'm, yeah the muscly style and. Do they have anything I, when, on that wasn't American? Mm, I think if you paid higher, you there could. were like the actual like sport ones, not the muscle ones. Yeah. But not not that I could see anyway in, mm-hmm. in our stuff. Um and when they both when they're like, Oh, well, we want a challenger, I'm like, I'm not fucking waiting around behind these guys. The guy looks at me, he's like, That Mustang, they're good. And I'm like, Yep. <laughs> Later. Uh that's cool. How it was, was Texas, a fun time. Though? Texas was good. Texas was nice. Texas was fun. You've been there before. So. Yeah, I've been there before, but not to that part. I hadn't been to Dallas before. I'd gone to San Antonio before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was good. I didn't get to... Uh, I could have taken another day and just kind of done stuff and yeah. like not had to have responsibilities to be places. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't want to because I would have I would have had to end up taking a day off of work on either end yeah. more than I was already taking. Uh, and I didn't want to do that, but it was it was nice. It was good, good weather the entire time. Uh, it rained once, but it was after everything was already done. So who really cares? I mean, I got bit to hell our last night, the night that I was up till four thirty in the morning. I I got back. Was it and, like mosquitoes or like? Yeah, like, I think just mosquitoes and gnats. Hmm. Like I got back on uh, Monday, like Monday afternoon. I can feel my feet and like legs itching. I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding oh, it was me! Probably like some sort of sand flea then, right? No, I we were sitting underneath a por- like on a porch. Oh. So it was mosquitoes because I was killing them, and I didn't really get. I got like bit 
a couple spots on my arms, but it was really my legs and feet that got the majority of it. No, it was good. Um, if I got paid enough, I would move down there. I would have to, and that's the joke. So because uh, we can talk about that off air, but because certain things might be moving to Dallas that they would need people for that our friends might have connections through. Yeah. I was like, she's like, oh yeah, you guys should all move down here. I was like, if you give me, if you get me a job that pays me enough to justify uprooting everything. Yeah. And she didn't ask me what that number was. Uh, and that number's not good enough. <laughs> that number's that number's up there. I don't know. It's not like I have enough. It's not like I have really anything tying me here. But the number that I would want to deal with that for is is decent. Hmm. I don't know. I think mine would probably be lower just because, like, um, the opportunities down there is probably better and the, probably the standard of living is probably better just it, from like it seemed it from what i was around yeah just from like the perspective of like not dealing with things that are but because i'd be, to because i'd be area. in the city and stuff like that that's where it all i would have to potentially take the m- more money to then deal with cost of living and stuff like that and you know it, it, it's a give and take yeah yeah so that's where i'd really have to like okay here's the number and i'm like okay so i'm probably getting actually this and then you know do the whole cost Cost analysis of living down there. Did you notice any weird pricing for things when you were the little? Uh, bit not not when I was like doing any quick shopping or anything. I think gas was plus fifty cents cheaper. Yeah, I could see that. It was like I fifty mean, cents minimum. Whenever the difference. Whenever we'd go down to like Virginia, when I was with my grandparents when I was younger, it was always like yeah. It's you could, always you could cheaper. Just watch it roll down. Yeah, the south, the further south you go, I think the cheaper it gets. But it was at the one place I remember seeing was fifty cents, and I think it just continued that trend. Hmm. Nice, nice indeed. But uh, that's what I was up to last weekend. What have you been up to without me? Um, hookers and cocaine, dude. I wish I'd done that in Texas. Don't we all? All right. Uh, what have I been doing? Uh, we all wish that I had done that in Texas. <laughs> Uh, I could have, honestly, now that I think about it, I could have done that. Probably. Um, you're close enough to Mexico. The there's, apparently a, the uh, there's apparently a red light district somewhere around there. Oh, there's got to be. Anyway. Uh, what have I been doing? Um, well, uh, was it last week, I think? I don't know. See, now I'm all confused because I don't know what the hell happened. But we've been watching. All right, so the, the Great British Bake Off is on Netflix. Yep. So we watched that. Um, it was good. As as you should know by now, if you listen to this, Matt and I have an obsession with British TV shows. Mm-hmm. So, like in Britain, it's called, uh, or the UK, it's called the Great British Bake Off or something like that. Yeah. On Netflix, it's... Uh, Bake, is it just Bake Off? It's the Baking Show or oh. British Baking Show or something like that. I wonder if they have it copywritten or something for... I don't know. I, I don't like it, though. But... Uh... <laughs> No, it was really good. It was honestly, it was better than I thought it was going to be. We just watched the most recent season that Netflix has, which I think is two behind. So hanging, I think hanging out with Mary Berry and it was the first season with Noel Fielding as uh, as one of the hosts. I think. Oh, okay. Um, the crow himself, Noel yeah. Fielding. It was so good though, and it was cool because like I had my favorite, Samantha had her favorite, and like, of course that's what the best part of it is. And um, neither of them made it <laughs> to the to uh, Star Chef or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, so we watched that. Been watching Gundam. Uh, it's been fantastic. Um, what else? I haven't. What else have been viewing? I think that's it for viewing. I've been trying to watch the new Sword Art. The new Sword Art season started, but I have to work around the significant other's ridiculousness, which leads into the video game issue. Is your cat dying? Just a little dirty. He's all right. Dirty, dirty, dirty cat. Go clean yourself he's, up. He's dirty enough to the point where I would say don't pick him up right now. <laughs> don't let him on your lap. Love him. We should have to have a cleaning session later. What have you done, Max? What have you done? Anyway, yeah, the video gaming problem with the yeah. So the other, I played God of War, finished it, 
immediately before coming here, um, Samantha got home from work. And I'm like, hey, can we finish this? So there's like a half hour left. Oh, and so, so that you finished it really soon. Or, yeah. I mean, really close to this. It's actually, I had to finish watching the last little bit of it like on YouTube because she had to leave for a nail appointment. So I literally put it into rest mode. Like, you know how at the end you're, you're walking back down. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just dialogue. It's just banter back and for them talking. And then there's the, I don't know if you saw, did you go back to the house and sleep afterwards? Yes. Okay. So you saw the Thor thing. Yeah. So I had to watch that on YouTube because she had to think I did. Um, I don't remember if I slept or if I started doing side stuff right away. Did you see the Thor thing? I don't remember now. It it was it's been a basically couple months. it's like they go back to the house, they fall asleep, and Atreus has a dream that Thor shows up at oh. the house basically, and that's that's what. It, oh, and okay. then he wakes up and he tells Kratos about it, and Kratos is like, "Well, we'll deal with that. It wouldn't happen." Yeah, Kratos is like in God of War two. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm the her we, son, of, about, son we, of war. Yeah, we talked about this before, but essentially the plan was I was gonna beat God of War really quick, move on to Assassin's Creed, get through that, and then in time for Red Dead Redemption Two, which is not gonna happen because Samantha got invested in the God of War while I was playing it, and then I could only play when she was able to watch, which is a whole issue because you know conflicting time schedules and, and right. bullshit. Um, so now I'm just going to platinum it and then move on to like horizon or something like that. Something that I'm not like super attached to finishing. Right. And it's not like you have to worry about somebody getting attached to a storyline in horizon. Yeah, exactly. Um, how many fans do you have in this area? And I'm like, well, you should see my cars. (laughs) (laughs) Let's spend 20 minutes and talk about that. No, not really. Um, yeah. So I, I liked it. It wasn't. And I think it was because of the hype. I didn't live up to my expectations. So what would you give it then? For like a score? Yeah. I don't know. Probably like an eight. Yeah. So you did the same thing to me with Spider-Man. That's why I was just curious. Eight out of ten maybe. All right. Um, The gameplay was really good. Like I have no complaints about the gameplay. Like as far as like Mm -hmm. how it feels and everything. My only issue really with the game is like I was kind of expecting the the main story to be better. Okay. And it and it just was like there really wasn't a lot there. Like there there was like the story was fine and it just wasn't as like in depth as I thought it would be like it didn't like I don't know. I think it's kind of a I'm assuming it's like a palate cleanse situation where they're like we need to kind of lay a baseline down yeah, for the idea of things that we have in our head going to the next games. Yeah, I also got that feeling. But, um, I mean, it's got to be good, obviously. I'm, I'm, I, I have intentions of platinum yet because I'm so close. So Right. And, I mean, yeah, the gameplay is great. Uh, what did you think of... We should be out of spoiler territory by now. Yeah. Uh, the turn of him being Loki. Um, so, or like that entire mountain ascension and descension. So I kind of put it together, not that he was Loki, but that his mom was a giant pretty like, I don't want to say early, but like before the reveal, obviously, like well before we'd gotten to, to, uh, actually into, uh, Jotunheim. Yeah. When you see everybody's dead. Yeah. So I was like, oh, she's probably a giant. Like, Which is also a really weird turn on Jotunheim, but yeah. Um, so I should have seen the Loki thing coming, and after they said it, I was like, "Oh, that makes complete sense." Like, yeah. why, why? Like, what the fuck? Why didn't I think of that? Um, but that also, I lo- I liked it because, like, I mean, the the highlight of the main story is obviously their relationship and like him trying to figure out how to be a dad and his son and dealing to with the fact not that have he's him a- be a god. Like yeah. you are a god, but I need you to not be the gods because the gods suck. Yeah. Um, and then when he was like, "Oh, you know, you, the Loki," that was what your mom wanted to call you. I was like, "Oh, like, I don't know." Like it just kind of fucked me up a little bit because I was like, "Oh, like is that how, gonna be a good thing? Is that gonna be a bad thing? Like what, what's gonna happen here?" How long did it take you to realize Freya's son? Um, 
I didn't like. I don't know. Like, I think I kind of like once I fig- once you find out that she's Freya. Yeah. I just kind of assumed that Thor and Boulder were her kids, which I don't think Thor is. No, I'm not sure, but obviously Boulder is. Yeah. Um. But I just didn't really think about it until they made a point. I was like, oh, yeah, that is that is the thing. I technically think like Thor is her brother. Yeah, there's some weird thing. Like the yeah. fucking the they all fucked each yeah, other. It's, and it's the shit's whack. Killed their kids and ate them and the mistletoe thing. I I didn't even like when when because like the early in the game when she sees the mistletoe arrows and freaks out. Yeah. Um. Like I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then like I'm like, that's going to be some sort of foreshadowing. But it's so they're so far apart from each yeah. other that I completely that until forgot you think about back it. on it, you're like. Oh, that's because that's going to kill her son. Yeah. Which is the same thing when she's yelling at Kratos the entire time. He's going to freak out. Yeah. Like, unless you address it and try to save it, like, he is going to freak out and never want to see you again, yada, yada. Because, hey, I've done it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was good, though. I'll definitely play whatever sequel or DLC or whatever the hell they end up doing. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play whatever sequel. If they do DLC, I'm going to miss out on it because I'm probably going to trade the game, trade the game in here towards the end of the month. But DLC yeah. or uh, a I second one, definitely. Yeah, I don't. They didn't do like uh, a season pass or anything like no, that. So no, so I, I don't. I don't think they'll do it. Spider Man. They did, but I'm almost not about to buy that one. So it's like, yeah, I don't. I'm. I was happy with what Spider Man was and be like, cool. Now we're done. I have other things to play. Moving on. I, I usually when I skip a game of of like Spider Man's caliber, I have like a sense of like regret about it. But uh, for some reason, I just don't give a shit about Spider Man. So I'm like okay with the fact that I. Oh, the same thing. Like Detroit's always in the back of my head, mm-hmm. dude. But Detroit. That's, yeah, that's it. That's just there. I'm like, at some point, I'll get there. I what's probably gonna happen is it'll be a free game, and then you'll play it. But it's yeah. totally like Detroit. Mm. See, I don't know. For me, I think Detroit's. Just, if we ha- if 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 we were ranking the games as far as potential for being game of the year or something like that, I would put Detroit above God of War for me, just because Detroit was a like. The whole time I was playing God of War, I was comparing it to Horizon because they're so fucking similar. Um. Whereas Detroit was like a completely different experience yeah. for me. So. It's funny because there was a... Obviously, it's a circle jerk because it's R slash Spider-Man PS4. Yeah. Um, but people were talking about how like, what do you mean Spider-Man's not game of the year? I'm like, <laughs> really? I mean, it's good, but game of the year? Do you do realize Red Dead is still in consideration for that because it is comes out before deadlines? Yeah. What do do we know? What are the those are deadlines, or is it just usually most people's deadlines for game of the year or something somewhere in like mid November, around like Thanksgiving is like the cutoff, oh, which yeah. means so that have... Fallout just sneaks in. Yeah. But that I means Smash does not get considered because Smash is December, so usually Smash doesn't get counted because, but at least for like the game awards and stuff. Yeah. I'm other sites that don't actually like when we do ours, we do it. Yeah, we're a site. We're we're important. When we do our game of the year, it's based on everything we've touched or seen by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Which I understand. Yes, for sites that are actually doing a business, it's not as easy. But yeah. let's be honest, it's really not that hard either. I think that's the only, the only time that's hard is because you have 800 people in a room trying to scream at each other about why certain things are game of the year <coughs> versus other things. Yeah, so that's sounds, what I've been doing. It sounds like you've actually played a game. I did. I did play a game. Playing a game. You played a, you played a good one, and you completed a good one. That's two. That's two in two weeks. Yeah. You're on a roll. Uh, we're, 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 we're rolling. Now we're, it's crunch time. We're rolling. It's, down, time. it's rolling downhill now. It's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm you finally, honestly, climbed to the top of, me, you finally climbed to the top of the mountain of a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> it's making me nervous because I'm afraid of, like, I definitely want to play Assassin's Creed. I definitely want to play Red Dead Redemption, and I definitely want to play Fallout. Mm -hmm. And those three are going to end up like, well, Red Dead and Fallout are going to be like, Assassin's Creed is its own thing, which is, you know, I can, I can, it's not. Assassin's Creed, I will probably technically play next year. Mm -hmm. I will get it probably at Christmas, 
have a couple days with it to understand if I want to call it like a game of the year situation, but I won't actually sit down to play it until yeah. 2019. And even then, coming into 2019, I'm like, I got to be done by March. Yeah. I got division. I got, yeah, yeah, boom, 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 boom. For me, it's February anthem. But uh, the issue. I'll tell you what, if I still have EA access at that point, I'll play with you, but otherwise, I'm not touching it. What's wrong with Why does everyone hate on anthem? I, I'm not hating on Anthem, but I I say I'm saying if I have it if I have EA access I'll touch it at launch. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna at least give it a week just to kind of or Feel at least a, at least yeah. a day or something to kind of watch some stuff and be like, mm-hmm. see how long it takes somebody to actually get to the end. Yeah. And then be like, okay, so what are you now? What are you doing at the end, like to keep you playing? Mm-hmm. Like, is it gonna Destiny situation? It's kind of funny for where me I run the same strike for four days. It's like the opposite. Like, I don't. I'm iffy about the division. Which is like because of the same situation. Oh, I was kinda. so into the Division One. I'm, yeah. I'm all, I'm all about just uh, Division Two. Um, uh, yeah. The issues with Red Dead mm. and Fallout, though, is they're kind of like multiplayer dependent. So it's like you have to hit them at the right time. I feel like. Well, my group of friends. I don't think Red, think Red Dead's multiplayer dependent. It's not, but Red Dead Online. I'm really looking forward to that. But that's the beta in November. Yeah. That's not even full release of that idea yet. Yeah, it's true. So I'll have time to play it. Pretty much here's here's what our my thought is, right? My next two biggins. I mean my th- four, five, six. Like the next six games that I see, not in terms of coming out, but like that I have on my list are Super Mario Party. Oh wait, that doesn't matter if you beat it or not. That's just a fun party game. Smash Bros. Same. Do you have friends to play that with? Uh I think I'm actually <laughs> I think I'm actually going to get it next Friday, uh, and then Kenny and I are just going to jam and just hang out and play Mario Party, because like, who cares? Why not? Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, Smash, but like Smash is also another one where like I'm holding off until somebody else actually shows interest in playing Smash, because like, yeah. I don't really have a great a ton of interest in playing it. But I obviously, I obviously understand that it's a big title. Um, Horizon 4. Which will be a game pass, and then just kind of jam out when I'm bored, race around. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead, Assassin's Creed will be a probably 2019 thing. Battlefield. I don't know about that. About getting Battlefield? Yeah, just because I don't know. Uh, the my it's if the same I, issue with Fallout, where it's like I don't know who's getting it. I don't know how many people are actually Battlefield be because it. I have the pass. I'm just gonna have so that yeah. one. I'm not worried about. But Fallout. I'm in. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on PC, and Fallout is cleared to have this room become Fallout room. <laughs> uh, so what's it coming out? Second? Is it second? Mm, second Six. week, I think. Okay. I think it's the week of mm-hmm. one of those days. But yeah, fun time. Yeah. All right, so what have you been playing, doing, watching? Even with two weeks off, Matt. Yes. Well, with one week off. Seeing how I was Occupado in Texas, I didn't really have much time. Then bring the Switch? I didn't. Not that you'd have time. I was barely on my phone. Like, I was joking I was going to Snapchat a bunch of stuff. I didn't Snapchat anything. Yeah. I barely had conversations with people unless I had to. I was. Oh my God. How'd you survive? I I was having conversations with people. In real life? I was hanging out with uh, people I enjoy. Oh, you got cooties now. People I enjoy? What what is wrong with me? I don't know. I, I mean, I took a few showers when I got home <laughs> just to make sure that I was clean of socialization. Ugh. Disgusting. Um, but I've been sticking to my usual. Wow. MLB, FIFA. And then Kenny and I have been playing Ring of Elysium. I think I've talked about this before. If Maybe. I haven't, it's a free-to-play PC battle royale that looks pretty much like Modern Warfare 2. Interesting. We only play in first person. You can play in third person. Yes. We only play in first person. It's pretty fun. Does a lot of things right. It's still got a lot of work to go on it, but it's pretty fun. We what's, played, what's the, where's the profit coming in? Is there microtransactions for like uh, cosmetics? I think you can have microtransactions for cosmetics, but you can. there's an in-game currency that you just earn by finishing. And you earn it fast enough to just buy the chest to unlock stuff anyway. So I don't know. It's, Interesting. it's done by Tencent. So if that tells you anything about yeah. if it actually needs to worry about money, yeah. the answer is no. Ten cents, the biggest conglomerate. Period. Yeah. Or second the... subs, subsidiary of the biggest Chinese 
network provider or whatever it is. Tencent was in the news or something. Some with AI, I think. Can't remember what it was though. It wasn't game related. No, but I believe it. It was like some I don't know, whatever. Um, when I was on those flights though, Matt, I was reading more good, clean fun with Nick Offerman. Ah, how's that going? I went from thirty percent to somewhere in the high seventies. Oh, nice. Of completion of that book. Mm-hmm. Good time. Still a good time. It's amazing how like. When you have a good chunk of time to just, like, it's amazing how quick you can get through a book. Yeah. And that was still sleeping like two hours. So yeah. I could have probably come close to finishing it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a hearty book. It, yeah. But it's good. It's enjoyable. It's a good descriptor for that. that it's, um, yeah. Writing. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, it, I'm into the point now where, um, he's like talking to people in the shop and they're like showing you projects that they're doing and like step by steps of them. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of skipping through them. Yeah. Just because I'm not, I'm looking at like what the project is and like kind of how they're doing it, but I'm not yeah. actually needing the details because I'm not doing the project. So I can get through those sections pretty quick. But that's pretty good. Um, and then I was, I've, I am still watching baseball. We're postseason. The Yankees got eliminated. Rip. Heard about that. Yep. Um, uh, Watching soccer still. We're into football season, and we're soon to be into basketball and hockey season. Well, actually, we're in hockey season. We're soon to be in basketball season. And then I finally watched, in completion, Batman v Superman. Oh, yeah. You've never seen that. I had started to watch it at one point, and it only made it like 20 minutes in, and I think I closed out VLC for something. And when I came back, I just never triggered in my brain to go back and keep watching. It's a movie. (laughs) Oh, boy, it's a movie. I feel like I was fine with everything right up until Martha. Like, you're right. The pacing is awful. And it's really weird. Yeah. But everything was basically okay. And then Martha. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. I knew that was what bonds them together or whatever. But I was just like... It's just weird, right? Oh, like it just, uh, uh, it's like everything's going along, and then you're just like, Martha. And you're like, what the? F-? Yeah, that was my reaction when I, I I saw it in theaters, and that was my reaction. I was like, Martha, like, what, the, what the fuck? Like, like I know why and everything, but it's just such a weird delivery and moment and everything, and the whole. I don't know, it's just weird. The best part of that movie, Gal Gadot. She's. Whew. She's amazing. She is amazing. She's a princess. She is. A warrior princess. She is a warrior princess. Of um, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The best part of that movie, I think, is that little like vision that he has of the future, I think. It's like Batman, and he's like... it's um, He's like in some like desert... Oh, situation. Superman soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a mix between that, but I honestly think that Jesse Eisenberg did pretty well. I don't, I don't have an issue. My, my whole issue with that movie really is the, well, the pacing's bad. Like, yeah, it's, it's, weird. it's really the editing of the movie, like the cut of it. It's, yeah. Cause they, they cut out scenes that I feel like were crucial. Like, um, that relate to Jesse. I, well, did, did you watch the extended version? You might have watched the no. extended version. No. I don't think so. Because there was, they cut out in the original theatrical cut, there was a scene cut out that, like. Um, I mean, depending on what you're about to tell me, I'll tell you if I watched the extended or not. It was the scene where, like, uh, Lex Luthor, like, sees um, or speaks to or something. Uh, what the fuck's the dude's name? Um. Zod? Not Zod. Um, Steppenwolf. Magic Carpet Ride? No. <laughs> <laughs> Steppenwolf, one of uh, fucking Dark Sides or Dark Seeds, uh, however you want to say it, um, lieutenants there. Oh, yeah. I didn't, nope. Didn't see that. Which kind of explains why like, Lex Luthor is like, fucking nuts at the end. Well, there's a moment where he's in... Where he's basically bathing in the yeah liquid, and mm-hmm. he's talking to well, he, there's something happening. Yeah, there's some big 
guy also in there with him. Mm-hmm. And when he gets yanked out, that guy disappears. Yeah. I don't know if that's what we're talking about. Yeah, essentially. But I think he's already was... crazy at that point. Because that's after he's trying to summon... That's after he's already created Doomsday. Yeah. But there's like a crack there that happens at some point when he's all like... I don't know. It's there's like a one there's like one or two crucial scenes that they cut out that were like it's like he's, a, he's already a lot of things and he's like, already crazy. He's crazy like cr- crazy crazy at the point when he tells Superman to go fight Batman. Yeah. He's crazy but he's not like he's not the asylum level where yeah. he ends up at the end when he's yeah. saying how he's they're coming or the bell's already been rung. Yeah. I can't, remember, I can't remember what he says. It's but. something like that. Ding dong, ding dong. It was just weird. Like, and the whole thing, the I thought, like, I actually liked uh, Ben Affleck as as Batman and Bruce Wayne. I thought, it, like, it was interesting. But, like, what they did with Batman. I would say his. It, it's not they made so him, much, like, too metal almost. Yeah, it's like, not so much his Batman as it is what they did with Batman, I'm yeah, like, yeah, like the all, fucking guns and him shooting people and stuff was just yeah, too much. I had, me. I very much had like uh, Doom guy going on where I'm just like, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, what? No, <laughs> exactly. It was, it was something. Yeah, but I watched it. Have you seen Suicide Squad? Yeah, I watched that in theaters. Okay, I, that's the one I haven't seen. Speaking of, one moment. Yeah. It's at the bottom. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it later then. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you put it in. Because I that is ex- Did I not call that? <laughs> did I not call that when we had the we, stuff? Yeah, we talked about we that. We both were just like, yeah. well, what are you going to do if you're him? <laughs> anyway. So, you heard Nate. Nah, 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 nah. Heard Nate and Matt talk about what's upcoming on their list, but here are some things you could play right now. And in case you're curious, this is only the top six that Nate pulled for the last two weeks because if he did everything, we'd be here for 10 minutes. New releases, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Dude, there's been a lot of uh, hubbub about that game. There's been a lot of a lot of nice a lot of coverage. It's, uh, it's just, I think it's Origins 2. It, that's not a bad thing. I don't mean like yeah. the game itself is Origin mm-hmm. 2, but I mean like the hype cycle is Origins 2. Yeah. Uh, I want to kick certain influencers straight in their teeth <laughs> um, because all they do sometimes is start jerking off games, which I'm fine with, but there's a level of like we need to just kind of, all right, cool. It's a good game. Let's, now let's just plateau. Mm-hmm. Let's not just keep spiking up so high because you're going you're gonna to hype up people that don't need yeah. it. Um, also, it's the problem I have with influencers – getting early copies where a, a week or more before the game's out, they're like, man, I'm already 18 hours into Assassin's Creed and I'm loving it. And you're just like, fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, you're special because you have followers. Whatever. That's just, it's a, it's a me thing. Well, I just, uh, well, on that same rant, it's my, my ego is bruised. Cause I don't have the free copy. No, not really. But my rant is, uh, I, I just like all the, like that. 18 things you should know before you start Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, well, I hate all those. <laughs> I hate all those articles. 10 reasons your boyfriend is cheating on you or 17 Easter eggs that are hidden in Fallout 4 that reference Doom. <laughs> uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Does this Splinter Cell mask allude to something? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Obviously, it could either allude to a new game or it could just be whole. Wait a second. We own all the Tom Clancy stuff. Cool. Bloop. It's. Uh, I mean, if do I get to run around ancient wherever we are in Odyssey with a full Sam Fisher outfit? Who knows? I also did love the post, by the way. No, while we're just ripping into Assassin's Creed, uh, there was a post. I think right along with launch day or something on uh, Reddit where somebody took the screen grab of like Assassin's Creed one to two. When they're like, oh, uh, crossbows wouldn't have been um, implemented at this time. So we wanted to be more historically accurate. So they give him another blade. And then like Ubisoft in 2018. And they're like riding chocobos with glowing <laughs> weapons. <laughs> like, yeah, historically accurate. Uh, that lasted a long time. <laughs> Other games that are out. Forza Horizon 4. I'm all about that. Yeah. We'll play it. Oh, yeah, we will. I need, I need some payback. Good luck. <laughs> 
You don't get to get payback in Horizon. Uh, you better pick the, you would pick the crew. You could probably get payback in Horizon. Can't play the crew. No. <laughs> can't play Horizon. <laughs> uh. Oh God, I feel it's funny too because Horizon had what two million people in the first week or something like that. Yeah, and it's like, man, what were crew's numbers? It is just, it's just better. There's no it's so much better. There's no. It, it's no, oh God. It's no two ways around it. Man, should I? Game. I want somebody to just come to me and be like, should I play the crew or Horizon? And like, <laughs> I'd get the Batman Robin slap. <laughs> crew. <laughs> no. Anyway, Super Mario Party is also out. WWE 2K19. Maple Story 2. I only threw that in because it's not what I thought it was. <laughs> and Black Ops 4. Yup. Now we get to dive into the 12 headlines that we have. Do you want to start? you want me to start? Whatever you want to do. Okay. I'll leave it up to you. All right, I'll go first. Um, Minecraft Dungeons. Ooh, this is the first part. You get to read what I wrote. Yes, I Except am. I didn't really write anything, so don't worry about it. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons. <laughs> what is there? Is it announced? Release date? It what is announced. It? No release date. It's, I believe, a like side game. It's essentially a Minecraft dungeon crawler. So like a spinoff, I'm assuming? Yeah. Like a... Same way that, like the Telltale one was. I think it's going to be a mm-hmm. spinoff type of thing. Oh, or, nice. or a mode within one of the two. Then they have the Village and Pill. I like that. Village and Pillage. It's the next big update coming in 2019. Adds pillagers and 10 new villagers. Also adding cats and pandas. That's fantastic. What do we need more in Minecraft? Cats and pandas. What do we get? Cats and pandas. Exactly. Uh, the pillagers is interesting because I didn't really I, right. I didn't really read anything too too deep into it. I just saw that this was a headline last week after or two weeks ago after we recorded. Pillagers. Pillagers. Um, but I was like, man, if you think if it's like raiders, like yeah. you have your village and they just show up like Mongolians, cool, and just Genghis Khan leading them and shank you. You can kill them, take their horses. I don't know. It'd be interesting. It'd be funny. Dude, the, I don't really the ten understand. more villagers is weird because. I never use the villagers anyway. <laughs> yeah, I always just murder them. Yeah. Or like, steal trade, all their shit. Trade me them. these things for this. I'm like, I could just go over there and get it myself. Yeah. Give me your village. <laughs> I needed a house. Minecraft has turned into just like something. It's something like else, village man. village and pillage. Oh, I was already doing that. I was pillaging those villagers all day. Number two. Actually, are we gonna go back and play Minecraft at some point? Maybe. Who knows? I want to. It's I feel one like of those games that like I want to Beat, and I'm doing air quotes here. Beat. You, you know? want to kill the Ender Dragon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know if I necessarily want to do that, but it would be cool just to kind of hang out at some point. Yeah. Just build some shit. Yeah. Do normal routine. Yeah. Watch Kenny get lost for 20 hours trying to build a tree, fo- tree fort. Yeah. That's pretty entertaining. Number dos. Server there, would play. We should get a server going. We'd have to actually get a server going. I mean, we can do it. It's not hard, but. Yeah. That was the problem with playing. That was pro- well, that was the problem with playing on console for like a month or two. Yeah, it was the problem with playing on console because I had to have my PS4 on. Yeah. Number dose. There was a Harry Potter leaked game that was rumored to be being made by Rocksteady. Turns out it's not being made by Rocksteady. There was a video that leaked out on YouTube, and Warner Brothers took it down via copyright strike. You can still find mirrors though if you really want to watch it. Matt likes water bottles. Uh, posted alongside the video was a press release sounding description of the game, which mention, mentions a 19th century setting starring a fifth year student who joins Hogwarts as a late arrival. You'll be able to curse and possibly kill dark wizards, goblins, and you can choose from eight character classes and either act good or evil. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like certain people are about to get real in deep into an RPG. Yeah. The um, last rumors I saw pegged it as a um, being made by a Warner Brothers studio called um, Elevation? Avalanche. Yeah, the Avalanche, guys. Yeah, Avalanche. Not to be confused with... The other Avalanche. Yeah. There, there's the two the branches two... of Angela, Avalanche. Just Cause Guys and non-Just Cause Guys. Yeah, so... Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. I'm I'm only curious to see it because I don't know. Like, the old Harry Potter games, I think you actually had to, like, move the stick in certain ways to cast spells. I'm like, oh, God, don't do that again, please. 
If they did like a uh, standard Western RPG with just, you know, a ton of fucking Harry Potter lore, people would be ecstatic. Like, oh, yeah. It could be turn based combat too. It wouldn't even like. I think the one thing it might, I don't think it'll hurt it, but having Harry Potter, you're going to immediately think, I get to play Harry Potter. And it's like, mm, yeah. no, you don't. They've been spending a lot of time trying to break that, yeah, that link with the world universe versus character. Yeah, is... they're they're trying real hard to make everyone say Wizarding World. Yeah, it's not really working. The wonderful Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> you still said it. <laughs> Numero trace. Trace. That's three for you English speakers. Co-founder and president of Blizzard Entertainment, Mike Morhane. Morhane. Morhane is stepping down as president, but will remain as an advisor for the company. His role will be taken by World of Warcraft executive producer J. Allen Brake. Brock? Brake? 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 We'll go with Brack. Brack? Yeah, Brack. why not? Let's read it like English. Yeah, man. Brack. That makes more sense. Uh, seems like a pretty standard passing in the torch, but the move has caused some other changes in Blizzard's executive team, including co-founder and lead designer for World of Warcraft, Alan Adham, Adham, whatever, yep. joining enough. the executive team in an unspecified role to, quote, oversee development of several new games, end quote. Cool. Cool. That's really all I have. I mean. Yeah. I just thought it was interesting. You WoW is like, kind wow. of in a shit show right now. Blizzard, is it? Oh, yeah. It's not good. <laughs> oh, no. What happened? <laughs> uh, this expansion? Yeah. It's not. Not living up to the. Hype? It's running into a lot of a lot of uh, unrest within the community. As far as lore goes, uh, or just in general, lore has currently become a problem. Uh, and, I have seen one post in reference to a couple people. Yeah, I've seen one post, Speci- and it was a photo. It was a screen. It was like a, a, a artwork or whatever of like a bunch of characters. Yep. And then it was like you know talking. It was like you know like this person. You know, showed up here, never was spoke of again. This person died by a random dude. Like, yep, yeah, yep, alive, dead, missing in action, yada mm-hmm. yada. Hasn't been seen since here. Yeah, hasn't uh, seen, hasn't been seen the last two expansions. No, like. specifically, the latest problem is Nathanos, a blight caller. Okay, Nathanos is Sylvanas's side piece, and uh, the people have been getting really annoyed because. I don't really want to get too far into it because this could take. I could just derail this entire thing. There's a ton of problems with the expansion already. Azerite prob, Azerite gear problems, content problems, yada yada. Stuff just being broken that should have been flushed out in beta that never were. All this stuff just communities like how does how does this still exist? This is we. How are these problems? Um, the dev team does not want to. For the most part, they have had one like AMA, but the communication back and forth. My understanding of it between the company and the community has been shit as of late. Where like they're saying stuff and the and in specifically in one of the posts, I think in discussing upcoming patch stuff, uh, they said uh, they used the term. Oh, what was it? Level of agency or something like that. When agency has been thrown around on the subreddit and not in like actual stuff you're like you've never talked about agency we always talk about agency and now you're saying agency so at least acknowledge you're talking trying to talk to us or mm-hmm. you're at least reading what we're saying yeah and uh the nathaniel's blight caller thing is so he's been a side he's a super weird character technically he is the only human to be trained in the elven archer way and he got killed and brought back. Then he got a new body instead of his rotting old one. So now he basically looks like a an actual like gray human. Uh, but he's her side piece and will do anything for his queen and yada yada. So basically what that broke down to was why is he so unbelievably stupid power? He's not a leader of the horde, but apparently he's stupid powerful. Way more powerful than he has a right to be. And... He like there are other horde leaders that we haven't seen. We just don't know what they're doing, or they're just like, oh yeah, I'm here, but like I don't do anything. Meanwhile, this side piece is just running around shooting and blowing up everything. You're like, what the fuck is he doing here? Uh, it's also 
a lot of the stuff is like revolved around him and it sound and he's just super annoying because he's almost ed- edge lordy and does anything <laughs> yeah. for, does anything for his side piece so people started attacking a certain writer who they think might have written themselves into his role so now that he they that person has portrayed themselves and written them how they would be and they're just like Oh my god, we have a neckbeard writing this. Uh, no wonder it explains everything. <laughs> so then the WoW subreddit started having to lock and delete posts everywhere because it was just coming out of the woodworks. People yeah. were finding him on Twitter and oh, it was not not good. Would that be surprised if that's happening? No. Is that how you write a game? No. Does that explain why everybody dislikes this game currently? Yes, because if you're writing it as what you want to be versus what other people should enjoy, that is a problem. Yeah. There's a line there. That needs to be uh, straddled. But is any of that actually happening? Who knows? Yeah. Could all, yeah. N- it all could be hearsay. Who knows? We'll never know, probably. No, there's no way we'd ever know. Uh, but I am probably going to end my subscription here this weekend. Ooh. Burn. Yeah. Uh, at least at least for now, because I'm running into the... I'm to the point where I'm like, I've done everything I want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for a content drop. So on, once I get actual stuff come do you, back to do you think do you foresee an end of life situation for world of warcraft do you think it still is viable yes to which part and no <laughs> <laughs> and no uh so i i can see an ending yeah cuz I, I think at some point it has to i'm but. just wondering at what point because we all know what Blizzard's capable of. Right. That's the thing. That's the so other part where you're like... So at what point do you say, all right, guys, I think the best move here is to cut the cord and, and let you move your resources to a new cool project. Right. I think if they if they were to say that they ended the World of Warcraft, first off, it's a shitstorm. Yeah. Second off, they would have to immediately follow it up with, we're ending like it would have to be. I just had a thought before you finish. I just Go ahead. had a thought. How hysterically funny would it be? Because you know, World World of Warcraft classics coming out. Yeah. So what if they? We're end, starting over. What if they end it, the current version, and just start re-releasing all the content and making everyone rebuy it? That'd be really funny. <laughs> We're gonna do this again. Ready for fourteen years? Here we go. <laughs> And everybody would just be like, all right, yeah, man. <laughs> um, so we know how I have a... This is the other part that I think would be really funny. We know how I, I have this weird thing where I can predict companies, not on purpose, but I just spit ideas out and then they sometime happen. Yeah, yeah. I can agree to that assessment. Yeah, because it <laughs> pissed you off one time. <laughs> so here's, here's the weird part, right? They'd have to say, we're ending the World of Warcraft. Now, they would have to do this at BlizzCon. That's the thing. They can't let this go to forums. They have to do it at BlizzCon on stage. And they say, we understand, not this year, obviously, because he just released. He can't do it this year. We're going to bring an end to the World of Warcraft. And then just eat booze for about 30 seconds. Just let it happen. Or just the gasps and murmurs and just, you know, just hands up and everybody just, but here's where we're going. And don't name it the Universe of Warcraft, but <laughs> and don't name it WoW 2, because <laughs> neither of those work. It has to be the same universe idea. Like, it has to be that same world, but essentially a... Because here's, here's the part, right? They almost are to the point where they can blow up the planet we live on. Yeah. And shift us. To some a different realm or right. whatever. So that planet could just go to waste. And then waste everybody with it or something along those natures Mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, you had unknown to you as characters, you had children or something that you guys tried to sneak through a portal or something to start anew on this new continent. So you're saying like same universe but essentially same universe a new game so, a sequel same also. universe so they don't freak everybody out by saying that that universe is now mm-hmm. there and we're starting something new they give you an idea so remember the lineage thing that Star Wars had 
Yeah, and Guild Wars did something similar. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So you had a lineage of your of your characters were all part of the same family. Yeah. So same thing where you can still look back at your characters in like a hall of memories type of situation, almost where they would put in. Now this is the part where I don't think they would actually do this, but it'd be pretty cool. So the I'm gonna get you. Gonna you can't ask me about <laughs> WoW. We're not gonna get anywhere. So. Uh. In in Star Wars, they yeah. had the you had your own little house or whatever you want to call it. I want to say hub world, but it's not hub world. It's like your house or whatever. Yeah, or ship or whatever the fuck it was. Well, there was you had a ship, but then you could also buy like apartments. Mm-hmm. So they would give you. I forgot like, about those. They had class halls, which were group instanced by classes. Obviously, like the paladin class yeah. hall, the druid area. They could individualize that. You could all have probably the same like location, but it's instance to you, and it is the place that you have built to honor your ancestors that you have heard stories of, and it's just your old characters like in a wall, yeah, discussing stuff like that, and that's how they start this new like thing where they could almost not make it two factions if they wanted to. Because they could get to the point where everything blew up and went to shit. Mm. And the youth of this movement are like, we just need to work together. Yeah, there's no and more then, factions, essentially. It's all integrated. Right, so they could say it's us versus this world. And then, if they really wanted to, then they could do what this actually did. Or what this actually should have done when they said battle for Azeroth. And you can get two expansions in where you've been building up these cities of your people and conquering this world. And then all of a sudden... Somebody stabs the king situation. Mm -hmm. Now there's two camps. Now you actually have to go back to... So it's it's possible. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Should Blizzard hire me? We can talk. But that's not the point. <laughs> <sighs> I, I would still be in for that. That, would, that sounds interesting enough to me where I'm like, you kept the original world. Mm -hmm. Cool. The Titans are still like existing is the weird thing. Like, do you, it, it's From, a... Yeah. I think there's like, there's st certain things that have to be ironed out. Yeah. But it's it's doable because then you can also move that to a new engine and do your visual yeah. updates. You can dump your for the most part you could dump That's what silly I, races and kind from, of create, you know. From an outsider's perspective, it looks to me like at this point World of Warcraft's almost becoming like a ball and chain for Blizzard to where like they need to just cut it loose and start fresh. Right. Because they're it's becoming a hindrance to their creativity kind of yeah so that's why i have no problem with them keeping that universe but like forcing us all to start again yeah situation and then you could actually have it so you're playing not not as a toddler obviously but they could do it if they wanted to where you played as a, a, a youthish like teenager mm -hmm. and then by the time you say you say they make the level cap like 50 who knows they make it 50 by the time you reach 50 you're just an adult now and you just stop aging you don't have to keep aging but like they give you like a progression of like you building yourself up to this person and then now you're there you're you're that's what you are you don't have to actually worry about dying based on old age but you canceled iron fist oh boo oh sorry sorry random random news update a news update iron fist canceled let's get nate out of wow talk because he will go forever into more boring stuff into worse stuff. Number four, Entertainment Software Associate CEO Mike Gallagher yeah, <laughs> has resigned. The ESA is not something you see talked about often, but it's responsible for E3, and Gallagher, as CEO specifically, was responsible for defending the video game medium from government censorship. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Successfully arguing before the U.S. Supreme Court that video games fall under free speech. Variety is reporting that he was forced out by the board of directors, but the ESA declined to comment on that report. Yeah. Cool. It's something. Something. Interesting. Behind the curtain. Behind. Wait. Is that the name of that show? What? I was just saying, like, you know. Well, there's Between Two Ferns, but Between Two Ferns is a spinoff of Behind the Something. Uh, are you talking about... It's that damn actor show. Yeah, the actor studio. Yeah, but what was it? wasn't it behind? Is it behind the actor studio? Maybe. I thought it was behind something. Like, I think it is. Didn't think I stopped doing it. He did. Then he came back, and then I think he stopped. I again. think he stopped again. Yeah. 
behind the actors guild behind the hmm. behind the actors studio. I feel like I feel like it's behind the something. Yeah, I I see. I feel the same way. I definitely know it's the actors studio. So it's like maybe it's just behind. Maybe it is that behind the actors studio. Somebody just message me right now. Let me know if you're right. I don't know. There's a weirdly weird episode where um, in the actors studio that's interesting <laughs> because obviously Derailed. it takes place at at, um, at like a college, like a film school yeah. or something. And uh, there's an episode with, I, I think it's, is it Al Pacino? It's someone. It might be Robert De Niro, actually. I don't know. It's one of those, like, big name actors. And Bradley Cooper is in, is there as a student asking him questions. Oh, that is interesting. And then Bradley Cooper comes on years later, and obviously, and is like, you know, it's a, a big thing because he used to be a student there. And, like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name who who does it. The gentleman who does the actor's studio there. I want to say it's James. I I can't remember, but he was like really emotional. Will about Will Ferrell like, ripped it up at one point. He did. He did, a, he did yeah, an SNL skit. Yeah, an SNL. Yeah, they were good too. Those skits. I love that show. The actor studio. It's great. Harrison Ford was on there. It's a good episode. You just love anything Harrison Ford. Shh. He's a treasure. It's inside the actor's studio. Inside the actor's studio. Uh, there's That's definitely a behind the something, though, isn't there? James Lipton. James Lipton. Good old tea manufacturer. All right, short one here, number five. We may see a new version of the Nintendo Switch if an article by the Wall Street Journal is true. <laughs> no, it's not. Fake news. They are reporting that Nintendo is still debating hardware and software. So literally, there was nothing other than, hey, there's a new Nintendo coming out next year. Yeah, you so switch. we'll you see. Switch, I should say. It's probably just going to be like a fucking update. Like, oh, we changed the screen. Yeah, probably. Uh, there was something that said that they weren't going to go with the iPhone OLED screens, though. So maybe they'll make it a bigger one. Maybe they'll make it a smaller one. I wouldn't be surprised if they were like eight inch switch, still dockable, mm. but bigger. I don't know, who knows, dude? I can't imagine the OLED screens must be like expensive as fuck still. Oh, probably. I mean, there's other OLED screens, but if you're going to act and use the exact one, Apple, who knows? Yeah. Number six. Google hit us with a surprise last week by announcing Project Stream. It's a game streaming service that streams games to Google Chrome. The invite-only test launched on the same day as the announcement and features Max Shut Up. <laughs> Ooh, now you're getting That's a new now one. you're getting real testy. It's because he's being a bitch. Oh, but I love him, Maxie Poo. Hi, 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 sweetheart. Can you just don't knock that over? All right, or that don't don't unplug those cords. Those cords are really needed. I just want him to don't like step on the phone. The phone's gonna go. Just want him to start like smacking stuff off the table. So I'll interrupt the story while we have Max here. Uh, you see that USB dongle from a headset? <laughs> Yeah. It goes missing every now and then. Jesus fucking whack. Yeah, he'll just get up there and he'll just be like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I see what, see what, see what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, watch this. Whack, whack. And it's just all the way against the back wall. <laughs> all right. So the invite-only test for Google, or for Project Stream, sorry. The invite-only test launched on the same day as the announcement and features Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It requires a 25-meg connection that sustains at least 15 megs with ping less than 40 milliseconds. Early indications are that it's actually pretty good as long as your internet can handle it. Faux shizzle. Faux shizzle. I have that speed. I should try this. I should see if they'll let me into the test. I think you can, like, apply for an invitation or whatever. Oh, I'll apply for an invitation, all right. Um, But... I'll invite everything. What the hell was I going to say? I can't remember now. Um... Yeah, every, everyone that's used it, like all the media people online that are talking about it, said that it's it's worked surprisingly well and it's uh, pretty responsive, no latency issues that they noticed. And um, which, yeah, single player game. So yeah, it's like you know, that's what it should be. Best case scenario. It's your question is when you start streaming a multiplayer game that's also dual streaming things to try to get upload speeds back out that you're actually kind of yeah. Mm, We'll see. Yeah. In the same vein. Yeah, number seven. Got a lot of uh, 
A lot of updates here with the Yves Guimont does not lie. <laughs> Yves Guimont predicts that we go to game streaming service. <laughs> is that French? I don't know if that's French. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is, that, is that racist? <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft has announced Project X Cloud. Oh, oui, oui. Or is that like cross cloud? It's probably X, right? Because Xbox. Let's just go with X Cloud because okay. X going to give it to you. Uh, Project X Cloud is a game streaming service that will be entering public trials in 2019. Apparently, those leaks we talked about a couple weeks ago had some credibility. To sum it up, X Cloud is a service that will allow gamers to stream Xbox One games to their mobile devices and play as normal. Uh, according to Microsoft's blog post, making Xbox One games compatible with X Cloud will require no extra work from developers, and they also allude that the service will work with PC as well, probably through the Windows Game Store. Uh, they make mention of custom hardware for the data centers and their Azure platform, as well as new ways of encoding and decoding. They also specifically mention that xCloud will work on 4G, and the current test is running at 10 megabits per second. 10 megs. Only 10 megs? Yeah, because they, they said they're trying to... They're basically working on the lowest common denominator scenario. I mean, so like they're trying to go as slow as possible, like get it to work at as slow a speed as possible. Obviously. I feel like he wants to bite me, but he's also just kind of hanging out. Yeah. I mean, he was biting me earlier, but that's par for the course. I mean, yeah, he bites me all the time, but. Awfully bitey. Yeah, dude, like it's it's happening faster than I thought it was going to. This whole streaming service thing. As we were just talking about it, um E3, right? Yeah, cuz that's when Ubisoft announced their That's stuff. when that's when Eve said he saw it coming. Mm-hmm. And then Yeah, I was Ubisoft just... didn't announce it, but it was doing it was during all the like the Game Pass talk yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I like didn't expect it to to start rolling this this quickly like i kind of thought we'd get another normal console generation first um but i don't know i don't know anymore like next console generation might be really weird stream boxes all righty number eight our boy jason schreier (laughs) i go the boy the man the myth the legend Jason Schreier of Kotaku has reported that Microsoft is close to finalizing a deal to buy developer Obsidian. Obsidian is best known for making Knights of the Old Republic. To, are they? Is that really what you wanted to go? <laughs> you. That's what I went with. All right, Knights of the Old Republic to the Sith Lords and Fallout New Vegas. A source of Schreier's that's familiar with operations at Microsoft said the company has been looking to bolster its PC development, which is the platform Obsidian tends to gravitate towards. We did not reach out for comment, but other people did, and found out that Microsoft and all those guys don't comment <laughs> don't comment <laughs> on rumors and speculation. But makes sense. Yeah, it's cool. Cool I'm, to see I'm what they'd really happy for them. Cool to see what they'd be doing, especially with the idea of Game Pass and stuff like that. Yeah, they. Um, I'm all about it, Matthew. I feel like they're one of those developers that uh, they just have bad luck a lot of times. I feel like well they I feel like they both get bad luck and people also love what they've done so it's a combination of they get bad luck but their fan base loves it so yeah so hopefully well they always have like money issues because yeah of like, whatever yeah they they don't they're an independent developer and they have bad luck <laughs> yep so um number nine uh, just like a short follow up to uh, the Telltale situation um, the Walking Dead will be finished by Skybound. Cool. Which is founded by the, what was it? The, who the hell was it? I don't remember. I think it was like the show creator or show, like the the show creator for The Walking Dead or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, they, they are finishing The Walking Dead and they are going to try to bring on or at least consult with members yeah. of the thing to get to keep the story correct. Yeah, yeah. They had a nice. Uh, he had a nice analogy he used where he said, um, 
it, we want to create a runway for them, basically, to land on. Very sweet. <laughs> we want to allow them to crash land their plane <laughs> on our runway. <laughs> so that we could steal the profit. Yeah. <laughs> Number 10. Last week, there was some rumblings of the possibility that Sony was finally implementing PSN name changes, but I think it's fair to say most people dismiss the rumors since we've heard them a million times. Well, the joke's on us, since Sony did, in fact, announce their... Well, fuck. Announce via their blog that PSN name changes are happening. Apparently, the feature is coming in early 2019. The first change will be free with follow-up changes costing $10 and then $5 only if you have PlayStation Plus. The name change isn't all good news, though. Of course it's not. Sony says, quote, This feature is compatible with PS4 games originally published after April 1st, 2018, and a large majority of the most played PS4 games that were released before this date. However, please note not all games and applications for PS4, PS3, and PS Vita systems are guaranteed to support the online ID change, and users may occasionally encounter issues or errors in certain games, end quote. According to Sony, reverting back to your previous name will fix most errors that could occur, and it will be free to revert back if you so choose. Oh, show. So, I only have two comments on this. Uh, one is the Reddit post that I, that I mentioned to you. Yep. Uh, with Jack Corden? Cor- it was some with a K, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. With his. Kobach. Yeah. Or, close. Uh, like with his involvement now at Sony and us moving closer to stuff like this. Also, we're not doing uh, PlayStation Experience. So, how about we just give you guys some news? Yeah. We don't really have, we really can't. Oh, but it would have been the biggest news year. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that Reddit post that you, that you were mentioning was, was really insightful. And, uh, like, we're, like, if I had a rate on a scale of like one to 10, like how into the industry we are, we're probably like, like most people, most gamers that say are like a two or three or something like that, we're probably like a, like maybe a five or a six. That dude's like clearly whoever made that post is clearly like I'd give, him, I'd give him a nine and I would move us up to like a seven and a half to an eight. Let's be honest. We're up there. Let's not belittle ourselves. I think I know, but like your not, average, your average is a five in that scale. Yeah. I think we're above average. Well, I wouldn't I yeah, I would But then I but then I think it's I think it starts going almost exponentially. Where we're well above average, mm-hmm. but then you reach the guy that's like, I've been staring at nothing but Sony for twenty years. <laughs> and it's like And he broke it all down and I'm like, wow, this dude knows his shit. I and mean, this makes a lot of sense. Like, yep. But he's also probably one of those people that doesn't jump ecosystems. Like we yeah. I'm not gonna I don't this just is a jerk off contest now, but he he probably lives in Sony where I'm balanced, at least myself, you two, are balancing four four to five ecosystems at any given moment of just trying to know as much as we can about everything. Yeah. Which, it's a, which like, is a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none situation. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, master of everything. EA, challenge everything. Anyway, <laughs> they haven't used uh, that tagline in forever. Wow. I miss the... Um, what was the really old one? Was it... It was... I just remember because it was like EA Sports, their original tag. It was like EA Sports. And it's like, it's in the play game. the game or it's in the game. That's what it was. E- it's in the game. EA Sports. It's, it's in, in the, the game. game. Yeah. I miss that. Then, there was, that then, there was the, then there was the big properties for like SSX and uh, this NFL Street and stuff, which is just EA Sports. Big. <laughs> That's just all it was. <laughs> they just like yelled big and then put the word big on there. Uh, I just imagine like Terry Crews doing that. I remember, I remember the challenge everything one because that was <laughs> Harry Potter's. The Harry Potter and like Sorcerer Stone or whatever it was video game was. Uh, yeah, challenge everything. And that's just all it was. It was all in like a whisper. It's really weird. Yeah. Uh, all right, number eleven. Netflix has cast the two leading ladies in the new Witcher show, alongside Henry Cavill as Geralt. Will be. Freya Allen, uh, from Into the Badlands, known for Into the Badlands, will play Siri. Is that her name? Yes. Siri. Siri. And Anya Chal- uh, Chalotra? I don't know. 
from Wonderlust, uh, will play Yennefer. Uh, I don't. Did you see? Did you look into this at all? I'm, I don't even know if you saw it. I saw it, but I did not look into who they were. They look a little young to me. I mean, Siri's kind of young. You should look. You, you should. Uh, we'll look. We'll after, take a look. We'll, we'll look after. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe they're too young. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, it's obviously they're act actresses, actors, or whatever we're using right. now for a term. Um, it's 2018. So- they're people. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as said to somebody the other day, or this when we were watching stuff downstairs, just like, yeah, dude, can she be a dude? It's 2018. She be whatever she wants. <laughs> Calling everybody dudes now. Deal with it. Um, I didn't look at their ages, so they're probably you know like. They're probably actually not twelve. Yeah, they're probably like Selena older Gomez. Than us, Selena Gomez thing, older than me, but like they look like very young to the point of like, I mean, I have very limited experience with The Witcher. So is Geralt a pedophile? Um, well, I guess they could be going like a young because Henry Cavill's young compared to like the the girl we've seen. And I mean, if they really wanted to, they can explain the white hair with his Witcher transformation. Yeah, it's just. Um, I didn't anticipate them looking that young. Oh well, must be. I, I'm also. Assuming... We can also we can also look at Rule Thirty Four of Witcher Three. Oh, Jesus, and really understand <laughs> where the youth is. <laughs> Look, I just, uh, I kind of just assumed that they were going to. I like... bet you. I bet you Roach is in there. Oh God, that's the horse. In case you're curious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number twelve. Warner Brothers has confirmed to IO Nine that they are in talks with James Gunn to write and possibly direct the next Suicide Squad movie. Good move, Gamers 2 stamp of approval. <laughs> That'll be a thing. <laughs> just get, the, get a really big stamp. Just, Hurr! Yeah, it's... Uh, what, did, what did we say when they ditched Marvel? If you want to piss Marvel off, go make a DC movie and make it good. Yeah, yeah. And wonder, Suicide Squad 2 is not the one I thought you'd pick up, but here we are. One of my uh, coworkers was like, if 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 he can pull off like a you good can, Suicide Suicide Squad movie, Disney's going to be like, please come back. <laughs> you imagine it's just going to be Guardians. It's the same rough yeah, concept. Yeah. Team, adversity. A weird, weird team. Weird team, yeah, yep. Tr- Faux shizzle. Faux shizzle, nizzles, and times. Can you go ahead and click that link that says Discovery Pack? And now we're going to talk about deals because it's the beginning of the month for us, even though last week technically was. So you got some deals to hear about, people. That being said, deals. It's loading. I saw you about to say something, so I wasn't sure what you were going to say. Twitch Prime deals. If you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, which means you get access to. Darksiders War Mastered Edition, Sanitarium, Soma, and System Shock Enhanced Edition. If you have Xbox Gold, you get these games with Gold. Overcooked, Live Lock, Stuntman Ignition, Victor Vron, Hitman Blood Money. And if you have PlayStation Plus, these are the games for October, Friday the 13th, Laser League. Master Reboot, The Bridge, Rocket Birds 2, Evolution, and 2064 Read Only Memories. And then, if you wanted to spend the $12 for the monthly ones for November in Humble Bundle, spending $12 now immediately gets you access to Hollow Knight, the Hitman Complete First Season, and Seven Days to Die, with more to unlock in the beginning of November. There is also a discovery pack that Matt will now tell you. Pay $10 or more, and you would get War for the Overworld, Osiris, New Dawn, Kentucky Route Zero, Ruby, Grim Eclipse. I didn't know they had a game. They have a bunch of them, it seems. Uh, Phantom Brave PC, Tricky Towers, Rooster Teeth First, a one-month subscription. That's interesting. Um... And the bonuses. What is this? Oh, there's a bonus for a soundtrack and a coupon and all that good stuff. Yeah. 
That's what you get with the Discovery Pack. That's what you get. Bitches. Sorry, I'm looking at things that aren't making me happy. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah, well, you know what they are. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. Yeah. It's been a, what else you got? You got it's been a long week. I don't have anything else. I got a lot of stuff I got to play now. Yeah. We're in crunch time. We're, we're getting there. Hmm. Two and a half months. Bang it out. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get everything cleaned up before Red Dead in two weeks. Well, almost everything. Then Fallout two weeks after that. Then Battlefield the week after that. Which that's kind of, that's not a beat thing. That's just a do it thing. Yeah. And then all of December to clean up stuff going into New Year. You know what we didn't talk about? Did we, talk, we didn't talk about before. Did we talk about before? Crossplay? We did. Right? The crossplay with PlayStation? Yeah. We talked about it when they announced it for Fortnite the first week. Okay, okay. And that I, they were looking. I wasn't sure. If that we they were using that it. first before they all right. Ooh, move forward. I forgot. forgot about that. Yeah, that was the. That's when I texted you that day or whatever, and I was like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah so cool that being said you can find us everywhere you know where to find us every podcast service that I know that exists and on reddit and contrary to popular belief you can find the subreddit people it's not hard just gamers too r slash no question so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a text message about that right yeah. there because they're gonna be like I looked for it and <laughs> it wasn't there I, you had it as private I was like ah, it's been public the entire time it exists there's nothing there yeah. It's just there to be there. Just in case. Yeah. People want to shoot news links at us. People want to submit questions there. People want to ask things about anything. Yeah, they just put any, it all there. If they, questions? If for some reason, they, no, there's no questions, comments. Right. So if they don't want to use the damn form, because clearly people don't, then you just go to Reddit and put whatever you want. I'll filter it all through. Yeah. If you got any uh, suggestions on how to make this better, throw them in there. Throw them in somewhere. Yeah. Text me. I don't whatever, give a shit. Whatever it, it is, you know, maybe... Maybe it's convincing us to finally move this room around like you've heard us talk about for the last three episodes and put a camera up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, if it's video, if it's uh, more news, if less, it's less news. news. I think um, I think I got a little bit on the less news, which is why I worked in the our general bullshit chats once oh, a month. Yeah, yeah. But um, if it's still more, if it's still less news, do we need to just walk maybe, away from it altogether? Maybe more stuff outside of gaming. Yeah. Like uh, pop culture, or we can do pop culture. We can do anything. Or uh, pop, movies, pop, pol- TV pol- shows. <laughs> I, I mean, I would say politics, but that would get real nasty. It wouldn't get nasty um, for us. We can have a conversation. It's the something we'd say would go viral, and everyone would hate us. It would just be terrible. Can you believe these two racists in New York? <laughs> That's, oh, we didn't say anything. I said I love Chipotle. Come on now. Um. Yeah. I don't know. More game plays. Yeah. Which means one. <laughs> Ugh. I know. Ugh. Scary thought, isn't it? Yeah. There's all these things. I want I want to hear from people. Stop being in the shadows. People, talk to me. You have to fight for what you believe in. You have to fight for it. Just if you don't believe in, do it. If you don't believe in me, then that pretty much, I'm not surprised, actually. But we'll go from there. Don't let your dreams, dreams be dreams. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Shia. All right. See you guys next week. Bye.